Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So just a quick one, right? Uh, next week, there will not be a weekly market analysis because we are having Traders Fest, right? It is happening on the 16th and 17th September. So what is Traders Fest? It's basically a two-day online event, a free event, where I've actually invited traders that I do, whom I know, right, to come down and share with you their own trading strategies and techniques that work in today's market. All right. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is to, you know, to widen your horizon into, into, into different ways to profit in the markets. For example, I can share with you a list of these uh, traders that who are presenting. Uh, you have Jay Chandran. He will be talking about market profile and how to find you know, high probability trading setups. And this is really uh, for those of you who trade the Indian markets, the Nifty, because this is where he specialized in. Then you have Jason Clad who will be talking about systematic trend following applying to the stock markets. Okay, then you have Elvin Chow. He's actually a veteran trader and he's going to share with you lessons learned, right? After losing $105,000 from trading. This is a very honest uh, person whom I know. And you don't often find traders talking about their losses. You always hear about their winners, winners and success. But often you don't talk about their losers and know Elvin is being uh, straightforward and honest and share with you the most important lessons he learned, right? After losing this uh, six-figure sum. Then you have Adam Grimes. He'll be talking about market patterns on how to actually, you know, trade it correctly and improve your trading results and then you also have you know gavin gavin mcmaster who will be talking about options trading and how you can actually use it to uh, generate a consistent income from options trading uh for me personally i will be the host of traders fest and if you are you know if you're if you're interested i'm, I'm sure you are right just click this green button over here okay i'm going to do it now click this green button and you'll come to this page which is uh this one over here, right? Fill in your first name, last name, and email address and click register and you'll receive a confirmation email by GoToWebinar. And that means you are registered for this event. Okay, so this is what you need to do. Very simple. Uh, it's free, no credit cards required. And the speakers that I've selected, right, are people that I, I do know, right? And I believe that, you know, their work will add value to your trading. So this is why I've actually, you know, get them on board to uh, present this uh, Traders Fest event. So this is a free once again. And, you know, this is the link to do so, to register, right? So tradingwithrainer.com slash tradersfest. Pause the video right now, right? And register uh, immediately, okay? So moving on, right? Back to the markets. So I want to talk about, uh, uh since, since uh, today is the first week of September, I'm going to share with you, I would say the, the 10 most important charts that I would like you to pay attention to. But as well, I want to talk about news event, right? Often, I'm, I'm sure, you know, a lot of time, you know, traders, they are they are kind of worried you now about, you know, how news will affect their trading. For example, this week, you have, you know, North Korea mentioned their test about the hydrogen bomb, right? There is there is uh, tremors in the North Korea. I'm not sure, five or six magnitude. And they have come up with conclusion that, you know, because of, you know, this... Uh, earthquake or tremors, chances are, you know, North Korea are close to success, you know, with developing their own nuclear missile and stuff like that. And then, you know, the market starts to, you know, uh, a panic or, you know, you can see that the markets are, you know, are starting to gap up and move. For example, this one you're seeing over here is gold. It has gapped up today on Monday, right? And it's trading higher. But I want you to think about this. Right? If you just look at this chart, ignore the news and everything else, what do you see? Well, if you scroll back in time, right, you notice that gold, has already broken out on the 28th of August, right? If, if you're someone who lives, uh, let's say, in a desert, right? You only have access to end-of-day data, gold. You have no access to CNBC news and whatsoever. And you trade this particular setup, this breakout. You're going to be long anyway, long before, you know, any North Korean news or, or earthquake or missile test is, you know, is broadcast over the weekend. So this is what I'm trying to say is that, you know, based on my experience, the price usually leads news, right? The, the news that comes out usually serves to further push the price in its intended direction, right? You can see that this breakout pretty much occurred a few days before this uh, North Korean the missile news came out over the weekend, right? The 28th of August, it has already broke out, right? Prior to the breakout, we have this very nice build up over here before breaking and closing above this area of resistance. So whatever the news that comes out, right? This is uh, it's something that I don't really pay much attention to, right? Because I am a firm believer in price and the price is king. Everything else is secondary. Okay, so this is an example for gold. Uh, maybe, you know, if you don't look at the equity markets, right? Again, equity markets, you can see that, you know, the S&P 500, 
pretty much is in an uptrend. Why is that? Because you can see that the price is above the 200 period moving average. Then over the weekend, you have the North Korean news, the earthquake, the missile testing, and what happened? Bloop! You have this small little gap over here, and price is still pretty much, I'll say, the trend is still intact. It's still an uptrend. Did the news reverse this entire trend? No, right? The trend is still intact. What you had is just this little small gap over here that pretty much, I would say, won't even cause much of a worry or, you know, or, or any issue to your trading. Because, you know, if you, if, you're, if you are like me, right, you trade off usually the higher time frames, this gap isn't going to pose much of an issue. But, but if you're a day trader or scalper, there's a different story, right? But, you know, if, you know, as I've said, <laughs> it's not really much of an issue. The trend is still intact. If you look at NASDAQ, same thing, right? Price breaking out near the highs and then it pull back and you have this small gap near the highs. So what did the North Korea do? What did the missile testing do? Nothing, right? The, the price goes where it wants to go. The market do what it needs to do. The price leads news. Don't believe me? Let's have a look at another chart, right? Nikkei, how about this? Nikkei 2 to 5. So this market, right? You can see that for this whole period over here, I'm just going to, you know, share with you this portion, went in a, into a range, a very tight consolidation, and then it broke down this range, broke down this area of support, and then it just pretty much, you know, got into a, uh, I would say, a, formed a new range at this area over here. So, over the weekend, North Korea did a missile testing. Tremors, right, in North Korea. What happened? Well, you have a gap. A larger than usual gap, but does that change the technical structure of this chart? No, right? The range is still contained within its highs and this lows. So I hope by now you, you can see my point that, you know, as a trader, I'm not saying that news is irrelevant, it's not important, right? But your primary focus should be the price, right? Because the price can give you specific entries and exits, where to put your stop loss, how to manage it, manage your risk, how much of a size you should put on given your stop loss. All this can be achieved by looking at the price. But if you only look at the news, the news event, you can't achieve all that. You don't believe me? Let's say, for example, North Korea launched the missile, right? And it's, you know, let's say maybe successful. The market gaps down. So what now? How are you going to enter? How are you going to exit? Well, if you enter over here at market, okay, you put a sell order here. Let's call it S. Where are you going to put your stop loss? Till uh, North Korea, till North Korea maybe, you know, says that, oh, uh, you know, we our missile didn't work out. It's just a, a prank. You know, oh, we surrender, blah, blah, blah. And then you cover back your trade. Right? By the time the market could have, you know, moved large, largely against you. If you, do, if you were to just, you know, base your trading only on news. So this is why, you know, I say price is king, right? If you just look at the chart and you have a bearish bias, you can put a sell order here and maybe your stops above here, somewhere, you know, above this high, somewhere here as your, as your you know, your stop loss, right? That is fine, right? You're just, you know, basing, basing your trading decisions based on the technicality of the chart, right? You can see, you know, how much of an impact the price will make on your trading instead of just relying on fundamental news. Okay, so I hope this gives you uh, an insight right, into how important the price is. So moving on, right, I believe I've covered gold, covered the equity markets, right? Let's move on into the Forex markets. So Euro dollar, uh, nothing has, been, has changed, right? Since uh, I've been talking this market for months, right? The trend is still up, right? Price is above the, the uh, 200 period moving average. The long-term trend is up. And... The trend is relatively strong as well because, because you can see that it's still above the 20 period moving average. So if you want to long, right, long opportunity, looking for long opportunities, right, you can actually go down to the 4 hour time frame. Okay, and this will be, let me get rid of the 20, right, this will be an area that you could look to trade from. All right, you have a previous resistance, previous resistance, turn support and possibly come in here and get a price rejection closing higher, and that would be a valid opportunity to go long. So this is for Euro dollar. For pound dollar, this market, I would say there is nothing much for me at this point in time. The market seems to be more of a range bound. I don't really have any trading setup for this, but this will be the key levels I'm looking at for now. Aussie dollar, uh, similar story. The trend is still up. 
right? And pretty much contained within these highs and these lows over here. So if it comes back down and retest this uh this area of support, right, it could be a long opportunity to get long, right, in the in anticipation of higher prices. So Aussie dollar bullish as well. New Zealand dollar, this is the one that I would say is the one of the weakest currency at this point in time, right? If you look at this, right, we had this uh head and shoulders pattern forming up. Then price broke below this area of support. So for New Zealand dollar, there are two ways to trade this, right? Let's talk first and foremost on the daily time frame. So on the daily time frame, at this point in time, right, it doesn't look pretty. Price has, you know, break and close below this area of support. However, one possibility that could happen is this market rallies all the way back up higher and then close back above this area of support. That, to me, would be a bullish sign because traders who shot the breakdown of support are now trapped. And on top of it, you have the confluence of the 200 period moving average. So if that happened, that would be a bullish sign. And I would say that would you know, warrant at least a, a long setup. Now, that is for the daily time frame. Alternatively, for shorter term time frame traders that who wants to you know, trade in line of the uh, current trend, you could look at a one hour time frame. And you know, if price were to retrace back to this area of resistance, right, this would be a tr potential trading opportunity to go, to go short at this area of resistance in anticipation that it will reverse and the market would continue trading lower. So two ways to trade this New Zealand dollar and you know it really depends on your trading plan and you know your trading style as a trader. So just a couple of things to share with you. Dollar Canadian, this is a market that has pretty much broke and closed below this uh low. So I believe it's near the 50, it's really at the 52 week low. Okay, the 52 week low is, is this one, right, to be precise, but you know, it just uh just uh breach it, break it. So bearish on this. So again, right, how do you want to trade it? That's, that's the question. So no doubt the trend is down. So depending on the type of trading you employ, if you are, you know, a really long-term trader, right, a possibility that you can consider is to, you know, sell at the low over here, right, and get your stops above this high, somewhere, somewhere here, right, in anticipation that the long-term trend would continue, right? This, I believe, is the stop loss is way too large for most traders, right? So unless you're a really long-term trader who don't mind holding your trades for weeks or even months, then this could be a, a potential setup to look at. Because after all, if the trend is intact, right, you would expect to see lower highs and uh, lower lows. So if the market were to reverse all the way back up and hit your stops over here, right, then chances are this trend is probably, I would say, you know, possibly over or, you know, getting weak so this is why you don't want to be in a trade anymore if it hits your stop. Otherwise, if the trend were to continue, then you can expect, you know, for it to possibly retrace and then continue trading lower. So this is for dollar Canadian, right? For those of you who are looking to, who don't mind, right? Holding really long-term positions in the market. And another one is dollar yen. So this market, you can see that dollar yen pretty much range bound for the entire 2017, this highs and this lows over here. So from the looks of things, right, you can see that the, the, this market has been consolidating near the lower end of the range for quite some time. So if you ask me, right, a low risk entry into this market would be trying to short near these highs over here. So if you go down to the the four hour time frame, that's possible, right? And if this market does retest back these highs and then you know gets rejected, that would be uh, one of the lowest risk entry you can get because you're pretty much shorting near the highs. Okay. So you can see that you're pretty much, you know, getting shot somewhere near here with the confluence of the 200 period moving average as well. And if, if, right, the market, you know, does get rejected and it does break down lower, right, you can see that, you know, it's a pretty much a very good risk to reward trade, right? Because the move can, could be really big, right? If it does break out of this uh, area of support. So this is for dollar yen. Okay, so yep, right, that's all I have for you in this week's market analysis, right? Let's do a quick recap to what we have covered. The first thing I talk about is uh is price. Price is king. Right? That's why I said because you know uh I'm a firm believer that the price leads news. Of course you you can you can point out to me that hey Rainer, no look at right this market reverse or because of the news, blah blah blah. Price isn't king after all. Yes, I know there are you know certain times, right, where you know the news could reverse the entire move. But generally, right, in my experience, right, more often than not, price leads news. So this is why I'm a firm believer in just following the price. And I don't really pay much attention to news. So I shared that with you on the gold market as well as the the equity markets like you know the, the Nikkei, S&P and the NASDAQ. Okay. Then the second portion we went into is 
the FX markets, we talk about euro dollar, right? Bullish on this as the trend is still strong. Pound dollar is something that I'm not too keen as the market is pretty much range bound choppy. Similar for Aussie dollar, nothing much that interests me at this point in time. New Zealand dollar, we spoke about two potential trading setups, right? For the daily, could be a potential uh, false breakdown. Or if you go down to the hourly time frame, you could look to short at resistance to uh, get on board the existing trend. Then I talk about dollar Canadian. Okay, a possible long-term position trade if you are willing to hold your trades for weeks or even months. And then finally, dollar yen. Looking to short at resistance in anticipation of lower prices. So this is what we've covered in this week's market analysis. And oh yeah, last but not least, right? Another reminder. Traders Fest happening on the 16th and 17th September. Even if you can't make it, do register anyway because I'll send you the recordings and it will be a... Uh... Oh yeah, okay, so now, now, now we're at this uh, topic, right? I just want to, you know, explain or rather tell you the three top questions I get. First question, right? I always get, hey, Rainer, will there be a recording, right? So actually, all the information are on this page. It's a matter of whether you want to, <laughs> to read it or not, right? So again, uh, most common questions, blah, 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 right? So let me just share with you, right? So you will you get a recording? Yes, right? You will get a recording, right? And it will be available for 48 hours. Second question I get is like, hey, traders, uh, sorry, hey, Rainer, uh, I'm from, say, uh, let's say I'm from uh, Afghanistan, right? Uh, what time is it in my time zone? <laughs> so this is uh, interesting because uh, firstly, I do not know, I do not memorize all the different time zones in the world. Secondly, right, I may not know where you are from or what time zone you're in. So to answer that question, I would always say go and Google and find out the answer. Everything is probably uh, uh, down there. So just convert the time zone. For example, this one is uh, 8.30 p.m. GMT plus 8. Just convert it into your time zone, right? Uh, just search Google uh, time zone converter and just plug and play and you'll know which time zone it starts in. Okay, so these are the two most common questions I get. So anyway, the if you want to register, this is the link and I've come to the end of uh, today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe button below. I would really appreciate it, right? Knowing that uh, this is something that you enjoy. And if there's any questions or feedback, just let me know below and I'll get back to you. So with that, I wish you good luck and good trading. I'll talk to you soon.